and welcome to Glorious Kitchen. We're very excited to have you here and we've got a really nice treat for you as a family where we've been back here getting prepped up. This is our very first cooking demo. So have patience with us. We've got a second on camera here on my mom's phone. So we're gonna try to uh, make that work um, a little bit. So just give me a second here and I'm going to see if we can make that work. and see how this works. Welcome to Gloria's Kitchen, folks. We're very excited to have you here. And today we have no other than my mom and my daughter, Isabella. They're chopping away here to make this dish that we've made as a family as a, something very, very simple. So let me show you the ingredients first. I'm gonna mute this. Okay, so we're back. Little technical difficulty. So this is our first cooking demo as a family, and we thought it would be appropriate because we are three generations of artists and people who love, I'm not an artist, but I'm a kitchen artist a little bit. My sister actually is the one, and Mandy, if you're out there, she's a chef, so she's probably cracking up right now because we um, were bringing this to you. But this is a dish that's super simple to create. We are very much about on the go, uh, between the art, running a gallery and all that, I don't always have a lot of time to cook, but I learned everything from my mom. And as you can see, there she is, Gloria. Say hello. Hello, to everybody. <laughs> yeah, I used to be a, a really good cook. Back in the days when I was at Grand Ola. She still is a really good cook, and I think that comes from her Chinese background. And then my daughter here, Isabella is also a pretty accomplished cook. And tell the viewers what you like to make. Um, I like baking and cooking. I, I really like baking just because I think it's really fun to decorate and there's so many things you can do with it. But uh, a lot of the stuff I learned how to cook, I learned from my grandma because she's awesome and the best. That, yes. is, that is true. So let me just break down what we're making. We're making a pasta primavera today. Very simple. We chose to use shrimp in our recipe, but you can use anything. So let me show you the simple ingredients. And what's beautiful about this recipe is you really cannot screw it up. It takes a lot to really not do it right. There's a lot of uh, fail-proof methods here. So you can see Isabella is chopping up the tomatoes. And she has also chopped up these um, shallots here. You can see I put the ingredients over here, too. I'm going to walk around. So we use four Roma tomatoes, one shallot, excuse the garbage can uh, truck over here, half a stick of butter, heavy whipping cream, and of course you cannot go wrong with heavy whipping cream. We've got some capers here. We'll be sprinkling it with some Parmesan cheese, and then we have our shrimp. So we're going to just go ahead and get this party started. We've already cooked and we have spaghetti noodles. So everybody has that unless you're going through COVID-19, in which case you cannot find spaghetti noodles to save your life. So I'm just going to put this butter in here, let this melt. We've got our spaghetti here. That'll come in after. And then we're going to start with these ingredients. So it's pretty simple, other than the fact that my mom's stove does not heat up that fast. What's up with your stove, Mom? It's all about getting a good burner going. Okay, so we should have started that before. We are not Rachel Ray's kitchen, but we're getting there. In the meantime, there's a really important part of this recipe if you're 21 and older, and that is wine. You definitely have to have wine. Wine is probably one of the most important ingredients when you're cooking because it keeps the chef really lubricated and also filled with joy. Right. Isabella, where's your cranberry juice? We forgot it. Yeah, I opted for water. She opted mm. for water. So while that's um, while that is uh, marinating there for just a second, this recipe goes real quick, folks. I wanted to share a little bit about. Um, what my mom's been working on, because she had been, prior to this, she did a whole, how many, five or six small floral pieces, right? And so those just came back from the frame, framer, 
and then Isabella had been working on some Bella hearts. And so we'll be showing you those here in a minute. But these gals are constantly working, and a lot of times as a working mom, what's really nice is Isabella will go over to her grandma's, and they'll collaborate and start working on things together. So that's my saving grace. And it's also allowed Isabella, kind of like the kitchen, to be able to learn from her grandma about art. So it's truly something that we're doing as a family. Okay, we're ready to rock and roll, folks. Start with the garlic, Mom. Let's throw that garlic in. We got our butter going. All right. So we'll just let that, give that just a second to start warming up. All right, Isabella. Let's go with the tomatoes and the right. yum. And the shrimp. Carrying this yum. Yum. Yep. All right. Children with a knife. I love it. Oh, I've held a knife before. <laughs> That's how gets a little sketchy with right? the become teenagers. You just never know. But she's a good kid, so I'm lucky. So we just put all that in. Our shrimp goes in. We actually had a cooking class at my school, which was really fun. Okay. Yeah, you're one of the last schools that have that. So we'll just let that start to marinate. Now two two spoons of paper will go in. Go for it. With the juice or without? Uh, you can throw a little juice in. This is the beautiful thing about this recipe. You can kind of go for it. All right, so this does not take long, folks. We get this thing going, and if you have a, a stove that has a higher flame, that's, that's kind of recommended. Well, at least it's not ours that goes, like, way too hot. That's true. We have one that's uh, a pretty good one, but this will just take Actually, a second. Actually, that burner's better. Right. One. Oh, is yeah. it? Okay. Switching burners, yeah. switching burners. Here we go. So my mom is living in this really cute little area called North Park now. And why don't you share, Mom, why you moved here? Because she was living in the country for a while. Well, I lived in La Mesa, and it was way too hot there, but I wanted to move closer to you and, you know, be able to help you out with Isabella picking up from school. And and it just so happened, this ha happened to come about, and it had all the things I needed. And uh, it's small, but like all the houses in North Park, they're all the bedrooms are small, all the houses are small, but you just make do. You live the out outdoor life anyway in California, so... It's nice, and for those of you who don't know who we are, my mom and I, we started Exclusive Collections in 1995 in La Jolla, California, and it was a really adventure because, first of all, we had no funding. You quit your job to come work with me because I couldn't afford years. to yeah. hire anyone. So my mom quit her job. She moved in with me. I think I paid you, what, a whopping $500 a month? Mm -hmm. So that's how we but started. But I had no costs. That's true. So that's how we started. And we worked in La Jolla. We would get there at 10 o'clock in the morning, and we would leave at midnight. And we usually would split Monday where she would have a Monday off or I would have a Monday off. And that's how we started. And we had this location that was definitely less than favorable. And I remember, you know, we would, remember we tried everything to just kick people in the door. We had spinners, we put up signs. Well, they had this big, huge block in front of the gallery. What was it? The electrical box. Electrical box, yeah. And we had that painted. We did everything we could. And so here we are. That was 1998. Here we are celebrating 25 years in business. And Isabella is um, being able to benefit from that success. So mm -hmm. it's great. Okay, so we're almost there. Shrimp's almost cooked. So you just wait till the shrimp gets red. We've used raw shrimp. If you have frozen shrimp, you can use that as well. And this is um, usually doesn't take that long for this to saute. But uh, we've got, we're a little stove challenged here on that, but it's fine. Yeah, it's not there. state of the art. So once, while that's cooking, the next part of this, which is super simple, is I just add a little bit of this olive oil into the pan, into the pot that I actually cooked the spaghetti in. 
Yep, it follows the feet. And so I put that in there and I let that heat up. Throw a little bit more garlic in it. Oh, we don't have any. Throw the capers in it and get that lemon ready. And then this is really. This is the getty a little bit to keep it from sticking together when I put it in the pan. So that's pretty easy. And then I just throw this in there like that. Okay. So you get that in there. So you sizzle, my wiggle, sizzle my wiggle, and then you put a little bit of uh, that Himalayan salt and pepper. I think you got it right there, yeah. Oh, you have it? This one, yeah. Yep. Just salt that spaghetti just a little bit. We love our salt. I know it's not and good for you. Okay, perfect. And a little pepper. Put that in there. Oh, a little hard to burn here. There we go. And voila, spaghetti is ready. And then you take this beautiful concoction which is nice and cooked now. You could probably cook this a little longer, folks, as far as the tomatoes. They usually get a little softer, but we can make it a little bit more al dente. Reedy, my mom, I'm, I'm, I'm hungry. All right, so you throw that in here. And it's nice, too, because you don't have to use a bunch of dishes. You're basically just using your spaghetti pot that you use to make the spaghetti to begin with. Flip that sucker around like that. Look at that. You getting a good look at this? No, it would be good. A little chopped parsley at the end. Oh, yeah. Oh, we, we can add that. And the thing that's nice is you can use chicken, pork, seafood. Um, you can add mushrooms. You could add broccoli, too, if you wanted to in your saute. And then what really makes this thing work, seriously, folks, you got to have whipping cream. It is really bad for you, but we love it. Live a little. You gotta live a little. No so we put the, 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 the uh, whipping cream in there. You know, that stir you fast. Go. Isabel, let's stir that sucker up. You just stir it up, get it nice and hot, ready to go. Add a little lemon for flavor. Take it to the next level, and voila, there's you got it, your pasta primavera, even your boyfriends or husbands can make this, there you go. super simple. And now we're going to put it on the plate, plate it, now we got teamwork right here. And last but not least, some Parmesan cheese. Isabella, go ahead and sprinkle that on there. Who's hungry? I never want cheese. <laughs> and there it is, folks. Pasta Primavera a la Gloria's Kitchen and Isabella. So super simple. We will send you the recipe, but I think you got it. I mean, it's super simple. And uh, that's about what we can bring to you in the kitchen. That's my really, my only super creative talent is the simplest dishes and I learned that from my mom. So what are you guys going to eat? That's it. <laughs> so now we're going to take you into the studio. So that's our uh, cooking demo for Mother's Day on our way to the studio and we'll be eating that as you know a little bit later. But let's follow the artists into their studio. Isabella, we'll, we'll follow